Hello, and welcome to my Goyman campaign. I'm not sure exactly if that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, we'll start off with research slots. We have two of them. Uh, let's get our research up while we can. And industry. Get some factors. That probably seems good. Um, take a quick look. What's, what's killing us right now? A lot of stuff. Okay, so it's not going to be a little fix. All right. Three civilian factories. We'll start off by building these up, and then we'll see from there what we want to do. Uh, three military factories. Basic rifles. We need. Select. So we need. These guys probably just need rifles and support equipment. Yes. Anti tank artillery. All right. Eh. Anti tank artillery. And then there's just you guys. We need IFV and motorized. Nope, IFV is there. Assume APC's that. Right. Oh no, that's a tank. No, we'll still be building uh, that for now. Basic APC. Um. Nah, let's make an extra gun for right now. Oh wait, no, no. I don't know why it didn't pop up before. Alright, cool. Divisions of basic training. Let's look at this. I think we should just do this to the better equipment. Manpower. Yep, that doesn't kill our manpower. And let's build at least one of these for now. Alright, now with that done, we'll go ahead and go for or one focus that we have. Alright, the territories of the former Soviet Union have never seen darker days than the ones they currently experience. Petty warlords wage war among themselves, and all while the hated fascists who started their misery send their dreaded Luftwaffe to rain death and destruction right atop our heads. Yet the cool fascists of the Reich would, are simply not content with their previous defeats, and would simply go a step further by kicking the Russian people there down. The state of affairs cannot continue. Chairman Kagnovich here is the plight of those who suffer, and with his aid, new strategies will be undertaken to mitigate the worst of the damage. A comprehensive program for surviving and thriving despite the bombing shall be intensified. Right? Insufficient resource of rubber. We're not going to worry about that right now. We want to spend our spending in factories building right now. All right. Along with the Communist Party of Lenin Stalin, long live General Secretary of Western Siberian Communist Party comrade Bazar Kegnovich. Long live the people of Russia that caused the people and the Red Army who keep us safe. Death to the Black League of Alms who betrayed the revolution and will bring ruin to all of Russia. Death to the madman. Probably leads them to wishes upon our once glorious nation into darkness. Situated with the Red Army in Svidals, they just threaten to destroy our glorious military and threaten to destroy our glorious nation. Death to the treacherous field marshal, and then she leads us to revolt against the glory of Comrade Kagnovich. When the traitor Bukharin assigned Comrade Kagnovich to Western Siberia, he did not realize this would be setting the plan for his own demise. When he showed his true colors and failed to stop the hated Germans come from destroying our beautiful nation, Comrade Kagnovich led a glorious civil war against Bukharin in the name of former Comrade Joseph Stalin. While the Union fell, Kegnovich never ended his cause, and the former great People's Republic of Western Siberia time did not prove to be our ally, however, and the traitors in Omsk betrayed the revolution and launched a surprise attack on the capital of Finland. While we bravely held out and stopped these attacks, the People's Republic now lies dead, with the German bombing still plummeting, pummeling what little we have left to us. This situation has now lasted for over a year. Soon, however, we will find a way to bring justice to the traitors and restore the Union for the glory of Comrade Kegnovich and Comrade Stalin. Come on, limit for the people who are on. Very cool. I'm assuming we have to go through all of this before this ends. It removes. Yes. Okay. I wonder will any of these people try to attack us? Uh, 
look at these armies. Three to five, three to five, five. Okay. Scavenge for loot. Our position within Russia wasteland, we were able to make services of those is offering. Who is that? Um, hmm, or maybe I'm just blind. It's fine. All right, the modern bog turn of all this tales of Russian anarchy. Air stands by one has been spread from the frozen lands of the Far East to the city of Prunsa in the West and even deep into the lands of the Nazi Empire. The story of wandering from parts unknown who brings justice with them as they walk the nice the roads of old Russia. This wonder has come to be one of the great enigmas of all Russia. Little is known about its name with some reports. There are a former ranger in the Earl Guard, a man who left his home to bring justice to the worst of Russia. Others still allow tales of a former old soldier who by guilt and under a self imposed exile as a penance to the people he wronged. These can't reports tell of a widow from a destroyed village seeking to bring whether it's the justice she was denied. Whispers of the East speak of an American volunteer from the West Russian War, took in a land not on his own, but still doing good where he wandered. In the bars of Siberian cities, one can always find a strange and likely dug into tales of a man from the future come back to save the world. Whatever their true identity, and whatever their purposes, the purpose of the Soviet Union might be, what is known as his kindness they have shown to the people so used to violence and death. Tales are told of the wonder, holding up entire bandit raiding parties single handedly, liberating saves from prayer until an angel of light freeing themselves from the shackles before disappearing into the night. Receiving from Moscow of one main raid on Nazi strongholds. In the end, while many of these deeds have been undoubtedly fictitious, the actions of this hero of modern day Bagadar have lit fires in the hearts of, many, of even the most trampled upon in Russia. An interesting story, if nothing else. Unsurprising, we don't have much oil. Assassin strikes at Hitler. Oh, there it is. You literally just. You're just like an arms deal. Interesting. Holding out is done. Alright, the underground world or bunker buildings. Let's do this in case we need them. Alright, for everybody. For every day that the bombs fell, the people of our Republic have nowhere to hide and are forced to flee for their lives with the fear so palpable it haunts their dreams. Death tolls are rising by the day, and something must be done to the people place to seek shelter when the Luftwaffe will arrive once more to reap their bloody harvest. The answer are more bunkers. Every city, every town shall soon have a formidable system of bunkers, serve as unbreakable bomb shelters in times of peace, and effective form of defense in times of war. The Republic shall become a great fortress, completely unable to be breached by air or by land. The burden we bear. Comrade, there is no denying that things are hard. Great, but treason, fascism, and revisionism has whittled it down to the husk of its former self. Nevertheless, we have the true successes untainted by Bucharism or any other deviation from the path of Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. Traitors can slander us, subvert us, bomb us, and murder us. We cannot murder the righteous spirit of the working class. Comrade, be reassured by the fact that the Communist Party has made many sacrifices in your name. Bukhova works day and night, so you protect you from Nazism, warlordism, the Red Army, start work as ever, stands vigilant, so bandits who would harm you. The finest government in Russia makes the hardest decisions that you can live without fear, comrade. Should us guard remember this. All of our hardships, all of our enemies have carved us into a point of sharper than the bayonet. If we could pierce the word adversaries, ask yourself a vital question. How can you serve? But avoiding every fiber of being of the communist cause. Alright, let's see. War planning. I don't think that's worth it. Or at least I don't know if that's worth it. Um Political campaigns. Nope. We can try to secure control. Sure, why not? Ability will goring a successor. Okay, that's not uh great. Effects from it. Or lower realization, lower recovery rate, or construction speed, and lower factory output, lower dockyard output. Yeah, just getting a little bit will help. Let's go back to, uh... Ooh, these guys are raiding each other already. Interesting. 
We lose base gain because of lower war support. Okay. Huh. Okay, yeah. We're missing quite a bit. That's not surprising. Ooh, so we can go for something. New schools. New research facilities. Hmm. Let's look at these and see, like, what's the worst things we have. Um... Academic base is not great. Poverty rate is horrible. Try to get our poverty rate better. Okay, we don't have one for poverty rate. Um, let's go academic base then. Probably, no, that's, or it's not completely gone. I think I might go war planning next time because it's a Yeah, so this brings stability up two and two. This brings it down point two. So these two will cancel each cancel each other out, so it'll bring the stability back to where it was, but it will get my war support higher. I think overall is worth it. This is also interesting if we want to eventually get to that point. All right, war planning. I think that kind of stabilizes our stability and war support can start going up. Okay, so there's people we can go after right now. There's no reason why we shouldn't go after these guys. Unless we check and they have like a big army. No, they only have three. Hunger buildings are done. Let's get this. We have some construction speed. Surface has been a land of death and misery for many such years now, and our people are finding it much safer to seek greater opportunities on the ground. Who are we to stop them? As a matter of fact, this is a great wisdom in this trend. We will do well to embrace it with open arms. The chairman himself has been given the go-ahead to begin the construction of vast underground complexes to serve as a large variety of roles from administrative dwellings. Ideas have been proposed for entire military bases to be built underground. Such is the uncanny ingenuity of a truly socialist society to find hope in the most unlikely of places while in the darkest of times. Yeah, we need a lot more divisions. Um, might save our political power and go ahead and go with industrial investments. Getting free factories would be really nice. Keep losing us. Oh yeah, and I guess because we switched over here, that's probably the main reason we are uh, gaining stuff so slowly. How's construction going? Yeah, not good. About what I thought would happen. Oh. Forgot I had to press that for it to go. Tribute paid. My accuracy cost has caved in. Pay distribute, handing over desired loot from their state budget has been avoided and our men live to fight another day. It's unlikely that costume is to us again so easily. Alright, we'll go ahead and go like that.
And we'll probably go ahead and get rid of that so that way they stop, uh... We'll move them around a little bit. We don't want them to be attritioning, but we also want them to be able to move quickly if we ever get raided. See, okay, we're getting close. The A bears are the people who uh, the plant form in as a station just outside of Thuman Curse as the air strings went off. They knew that, as always, this factory would be a primary target on the oncoming incoming. So, with whatever damage the fixed plant chairman probably would demand our production levels remain constant, with woe to those who could not deliver. Forming his actions well sparked. With full packs proficiency, this four men stopped the line and directed the workers into the underground shelter that had been recently constructed. On one benefit supposed the drive to move so many things underground, if only the whole factory could follow. As the bombers grew closer, the four men fought to keep himself calm in front of his workers. Despite the number of bombs he had been through, they never managed to entirely suppress the panic felt when the bombs fell immediately close and the noise grew. He knew that the moment was fast approaching and if he didn't, and the noises started to come from a strange direction. One man volunteered to look outside and when he turned, Grand that were wild. Areas had arrived, ambushing the bombers and forced them to the scatter. In an instant, the foreman's panic was replaced with savage glee. The same emotion appearing on the face of their workers as well. Here, the Germans were learning that the Russians could and would fight back. He didn't know how many would die, shot to pieces, or inserted in their burning aircraft, but he and they hoped it was a lot. The fact that production would not suffer was an added bonus, a boon in every sense of the word. Nice. The underground world. Living in the shadows, rapid canavering. Ooh, that would be nice. Caravanning, I don't know why I pronounced it like that. Hidden communes, military holdouts. Let's start moving towards that. The hidden communes. The bomb shelters have proven to be an effective layer of protection for our people, but their nature means that we will still have to go about their business on the surface and will have to maintain a keenly developed sense of danger in order to make to the shelter in time. To make things matters worth no telling what would happen should the lift decide to ask us at night. Perhaps it would be wise to expand these shelters to serve another purpose. Underground bomb proof homes for the people. The people are living and working safely underground, and they, they would not even have to concern themselves with the arrival of bombing raids. Better yet, they would finally be able to sleep at night knowing they wouldn't be awoken by a siren. Very cool. Who under the earth? Leading in all outside, the local party's secretary, Igor, could feel himself trembling. By God, if only the workers had delegated a different foreman to make the report. He rehearsed the statement in his head. For one secretary, some of the men have concerned about the safety of these bunker construction plans. They feel as though the planes, as written, would produce structures as an intolerable risk of collapse. Of course, this is not to say that common companies or the communist party have done even single thing to jeopardize the safety of the people of Simon, but it could be planes could have been sabotaged by a country of the nation and competence among the workers. I would completely accept responsibility. A few more minutes of waiting and rehearsing went before the door finally opened. The secretary, a short, bored-looking Armenian, emerged from his office. Despite his efforts, Igor's statement came out as a nervous sorrent. The secretary searched him before he could even get the mandatory praise of Kevin Hutch. Yes, yes, safety concerns. I'll let my supervisors know. As the man closed the door, Igor felt relief watch over him. In a wave, all that was left was to hope that the message would climb to the chain of phone calls himself. Famously, a stubborn leader would heed it. What are we to do if we can't keep the people safe? Sort of sufficient overall to house everyone. We will increase our construction speed at the cost of population growth. Let's go for the stability. Alright, political campaign now. It isn't a political power, it's not great, but you know, what are you gonna do? I wonder if these guys can become leaders. I'm not going to change it, but... Let's see, can't purchase equipment still. I think this war support decline is temporary. At least I hope it is. We probably want to go through every one of these at least once, so we have to start getting at least some progress. Yeah, I know, spending photo power on that, but getting loot's an absolute necessity. Let's see, um... 
Beijing has defeated the Mongolian people fight in a war. I don't think there's anyone we can attack here. Or well, maybe there's just because there's time we gotta wait for it. So I believe it was these guys, and it was these guys who broke away from us. Not so red army. Likely gun for chasing or vision sympathies. Isn't the leader not a communist anymore? All right. Let's see, our repair speed and decrease our consumer goods requirements. Uh, let's see, what do we want? Um, to do this behind the times. Modern technology is all well and good, but what uses our factories are too damaged to produce them? The fact is, all the luxuries of the modern world will have to wait until the People's Republic is getting pulled with bombs nearly every day, and we can actually get our industry back and up running. Specializing in parting the people with older, more antiquated goods. Although they are less convenient to use, they are much easier to produce, especially in stressful times like ours. After all, when it rains death of a regular basis, our people will hardly be picking a lot of goods because they have access to. In fact, they should consider themselves lucky they're getting anything at all. Right, looks like uh, we have the opportunity to go for our research plan. We have the opportunity to go for our uh, maybe free factories. These guys are getting on our borders, which is kind of scary. Yeah, these guys are, I mean, they've got some pretty decent buffs. This isn't good at all. Still. All right, we've got it. Industrial investments. I don't know how we have to, but. Our industrial society development will begin to improve, right? Well, let's see. This is very slowly, I think, going to start moving up. 2.25 um, as a monthly rate, 13 out of <laughs> 240. But as long as it is moving in the right direction, everything is good. Oh, we have Lenin's Mausoleum, that's cool. Initiative's Redmond. Interesting. Survival programs, monthly population, construction speed. Pretty cool, all things considered. I wonder why we have women's mo uh, mausoleum. It's probably stupid. Behind the times, let's get... get living in the shadows. The bombings are only getting worse as time goes on. And our already weak industry is being searched to the absolute limits. As a result, production is, most is more sluggish than we'd like. A slow place is going to cause a lot of supplies and equipment reaching the front line. So ensure that our military stands ready to face any kind of foe. Under these circumstances, perhaps it may be necessary to make even more sacrifices. A considerable portion of our production capabilities has been devoted towards producing goods as aliens. Theoretically, the voting production of civilian goods would provide a substantial boost to our production of our arms and equipment for our troops. Is it really worth taking away what little luxuries our people have to access to? The final decision will rest in Chairman Cavanaugh. All right. Last time we sided with the people and we gave them uh, uh, more better safety in production. Let's see what we want to do this time based off of the buffs. I feel like these guys are uh, more, how do I say, like pragmatic? Not necessarily pragmatic, but like willing to do whatever it takes. So. Raid against the uh, your old military district. How strong are you? And where are you? Is that you? Yeah, let's not raid you. Um, Siberian Black League. Oh yeah, we can put this over here. 
That tells us. Okay. We have one more than you, so... There is something that gives us more arms production. Brazil wins the World Cup final. Up to the triumphant. Not super surprising. A day in the dark. That felt as much as he swung his back. The rock crumbled and showered his work crew with debris. He struggled to breathe. The particles that the rock gave out seemed to collect in his throat. He could feel his muscles weakening and it wouldn't be long now. He knew he would collapse and have to be dragged out of the dark tunnels into the infirmary. He knew that this would be this would be replaced in an instant some other poor saw from the work camp would be forced down into the darkness to dig the tunnels until they collapsed. That had been at this point of camp for almost two years. He'd run afoul of some party by law, and another had been exiled to the cell. His breath was coming in a shallow gulps at this point, and he knew he was nearing the end. He might even be left raw by the guards if he was especially unlikely. Before he could make his next move, he was stopped and shocked. Lo looks to man who grabbed his shoulder. It was one of the guards. One of the mercies was paid to supplement the garrison. Gently, he took them. A man took his pickaxe in one hand, and with the other, he pushed the canteen into the hands of the mount, motioning into the group. The danger then took his place on the line, swinging Lev's pick with vigor that shook him. Lev sat behind the line and drank greedily on the canteen. His breath was trained to molten, and the aches of his body seemed to lessen. The minutes returned to the line. The strange guard took the opportunity to take over for the worker next to him, and the guard kept an utmost supernatural pace. As he even slowly cycled through every member of the work, he told he never seemed to tire. The commandment called to the end of the workday. The F's crew walked to the tunnels with swans in their faces. They would never see a strange mercenary again. They had collected his pay and left the next day. Always remember him for taking their burden. Kindness takes many forms. Interesting. We can buy some equipment. Uh, you know what? We'll take it. Even if it's something... Oh, wait, no. This is not something we have a lot of. This will probably get rid of our last equipment arrives. Men shout in the distance, retreating from the patch of trees, shivering handpicked by Colonel Lichkin. That early mornings, a few stars peeked through the rising sun's glare along the gentle falling snowflakes were not strong enough to pierce the beauty through the grizzling sight of a bloodstained forest. As cloudy mists of the Russian blood sprayed through the trees, there deep in the Russian wilderness, Colonel Lichkin found himself alive. His men alive in every single blue honor of his front line. Find homestead, a village. On the run, or lying dead in the snow, everyone stood silent, taking in their first victory months, their first chance to make a stand against the Russian attackers who greatly pledged their land for so long. The men and their rivals hugged one another and cheered to the heavens over their newfound victory against the murder Steve's who played enough so long. Colonel Ukin, however, took a minute to inspect the body's boy, the least of which must have been 16, a prime age for cadets before the rise of the Soviets. Perhaps with the cold, life was size went in with the day when Russia would war no longer. She's and Kreis greeted the party of guards as they entered their settlement once again. The time had pissed their first victory against men who tore their way into Sunder for so long. However, while the rest of the men enjoyed family and taverns, Colonel Ukin made his way to the office, readying himself to congratulate the man truly in charge of victory, spinning the rotary. Colonel Ukin, wait. yes, Mayor Consul, driving with this is Colonel Ukin. We wish to report the lives to save the most recent transaction with our government. Excellent. Very cool. So, like, just like that. Just like that, we basically just got rid of our, uh, deficit. Oh, wait, I forgot. I set this up and I never pressed the button to actually do it. What happens if I forget to press this? I don't know. They refuse tribute. Huh. I mean, it looks like it's working. It's, uh, um, event, but okay. Our press of turn, men hurry home with trucks, so the flu blood smeared over their hands. They congratulate each other for this word against the unsuspecting enemy, patting their comments on the back, and taking the last few shots of the survivors going away. Victory in the skirmish, as our men cheer and whistle in hysteria of war, it represent to us the tragedy of prize from the grips of our adversaries. Seize all that we can use. Living in the shadows done. Okay, and once again, we're probably going to want to go ahead and set you guys up like that. Um, secure control to get more stability up in case we want to do, uh, which one is it? I don't remember. 
whatever one it is that gives us more support. All right, we're going to go ahead and select one more of these. Huh. Kind of like the idea of the Scavenger's Paradise. So does Rapid uh, uh, Caravaneer. Caravaneering. Okay, well, we'll do military holdouts. We'll go towards uh, Scavenger's Paradise. Little plenty of bomb shelters have been made available for people. You cannot sit in relative comfort and safety as Lufov attempts in vain to break their body and spirit. The water of the military. How can they hope to keep watch against our many enemies or explosives being rained down in their heads on a regular basis? Simple. So, but even more fortifications. <laughs> this time, the location and over fortified positions shall be chosen with the military in mind. Most likely, lines of defense shall be turned into internal readouts that are mostly safe from any kind of aerial attack, as well as the well prepared potential ground assaults. That's very cool. I think the raid's completely overcracked. Yep. Uh, nothing left to buy. Um, okay. That is it for this episode. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.